us, under his instruction, we're trying to just give you something, a little touch of these past times. As he has said many, many times, these dramas, they're just like my teachings. So listen very carefully. And again, thank you all so much for coming to New Garage for this wonderful festival. So this drama was written by Srimati Ruk Rukmavati in Australia. And here the girls of New Garage have put together this pastime of Chitraketu Maharaj. So for the pleasure of Srila Gurudev, our Tridandi Sanyasagan, to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, and to all of our honored guests, we humbly present this drama play. Please forgive any mistakes. Thank you very much. to achieve, and with it, my old journey came to an end, and a new one has begun. Assistant! Oh, you have come. Yes, yes, here I am. Isn't everything all right? Where are all the actors? Isn't the play supposed to start now? Yes, all of the devotees have gathered in great anticipation. Oh, yes, I see them now. Hi, <laughs> <Right>, everybody! <laughs> Tonight. One that goes back in time to the end of Satya Yuga and covers the expanse of the entire universe. It includes demigods and sages, palaces inhabited by millions, and a lake covered in lotus clusters. Oh, I get it now. I understand. I know it's bothering you. This, this stage is too small. We need a bigger stage. Maybe some new curtains. Whether the stage is too small or not, will our audience grasp the essential truth being spoken tonight? The rare and wonderful association of Bhagavad, the importance of Guru, the steadfast mind of a devotee, or the absolute invincibility of transcendental sound. Will these concepts travel through time and touch the hearts of our audience? Oh Lord, Will I again be able to be the servant of your servants who find shelters for lotus Will my mind always think of your transcendental attributes? Will my words glorify you? Will my body always engage in your loving service? Who is that? The fur. What beautiful prayer is just now being recited? The play is beginning, but this is the end. O oh Lord, source of all opportunities, I do not wish to enjoy in Jirvaloka, the heavenly planet, nor where Lord Brahma resides. I do not want to be the supreme ruler of the earthly or lower planets, nor do I want to be the master of the powers of mystic yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to be separated from you. Ah, this... This is the voice of King Indra. He 
he is remembering within his mind the words of the demon Ritrasura and remorsefully lamenting his fate. Remorsefully lamenting his fate? What is his fate? What ever happened to King Indra? And how did he end up in the stem of the lotus flower? One question at a time, for the answers are very complex. King Indra is living within the stem of a lotus flower, situated in the beautiful Manasa Sarovara Lake. He spends his time meditating on the Supreme Lord, remembering his killing of the demon Vrchasura and suffering almost to the point of starvation. Deciding from this vitra, sir? How is it possible that a demon could compose such beautiful prayers? King Indra is hiding from personified sin who chased him here and there throughout the universe. He is very ashamed and regretful because he killed a Vaishnava who appeared before him in the dress of the demon Richasura. But how could a Vaishnava take birth as a demon? A contradiction to be sure, a Vaishnav who takes birth as a demon and then encourages his enemy to slay him. The answer to your question will take us back to the beginning of our play tonight, where millions of years ago there was a king named Chichapetu. <coughs> this king possessed many opulences, many wives, a populace that loved him dearly and great personal attributes. But he was morose and constantly distraught for never having begot a son. Just see. Just see. 
just see the king's face is pale and reflects deep anxiety. Indeed, his mind is disturbed by those two rascals. My dear king, although you possess an entire kingdom, royal opulence, friends and servants, you appear as one who is receiving flower garlands and sandalwood pulp, while aggrieved with hunger and thirst. <coughs> Please tell me, what is the cause of this? This great sage is aware of everything, and yet he asks the cause of my anxiety. Let me tell him forthwith. I have no son, but I feel a great need for an heir to my throne. Can you please help me? <coughs> oh look, what's happening now? Did that sage agree to help King Chichikai to get his son? The play continues. Angiramuni is a very powerful sage. He is preparing a fire sacrifice and offering sweet rice. Now, that sweet is given to Queen Krita Duti, who will bear King Chichikai's son. Oh, so the king, he gets his son. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yay! Oh, so this, this could be the end of the play right now. No, no, not the end. Now listen very carefully to the words of Angira Muni, for King Chichiketu does not. Oh, great king, you will have a son who will be the cause of both great jubilation and lamentation. A son! I will have a son! You will have a son! He's going to get a son! Oh, this is wonderful! Everyone can be so happy now! But didn't you hear what Angira Muni said to the king as he was leaving? What? Angira Muni said that this son would be the cause of great happiness and great lamentation. Oh, but everyone knows about happiness and distress. That only means that, you know, maybe his little boy is going to be naughty sometimes because he's going to be so adorable. He can get away with anything. And his father's going to love him so much. And oh, he's just going to be so cute. And, you know, it's only in this way that maybe his father would experience just a little bit of anguish, just like a pinch. You just worry too much. Unless you happen to be a jealous co-wife whose heart has been rent asunder by the wielding claws of envy. But everyone... <laughs> way, in some course of time, a son will be born, and everyone should be happy. Well, a son is born, but everyone is not happy. I don't care. This just isn't fair. We are the king's wives as well. I am also a queen. Since the birth of that child. Oh, friend, but you forget. Not the queen with the sun. Whether it is fair or not. What can we do? Our husband hates us. Since the birth of that child. Our husband doesn't even care to glance in our direction anymore. With eyes only for the mother of that child. I can't go on like this. It's unbearable. We'd be better off as, as maidservants. I'm sorry to say, but it's true. The king at least shows no indifference to them. 
and the queen. She struts around like she owns us anyways. I despise her, hate her. You hate her, but the king, he insults us even more. The baby this, the baby that, it's all I ever hear. Did you know that our beloved husband gave away over 60 million cows on that child's birthday. And when he's not administering to the needs of that queen, he's with the baby in the nursery. I hate him with all my heart. And I, I hate the child. The reason we're all suffering this hell. For hate's sake, I'll spit my last breath at him. If only, if only what? The jackal screams through the blackness of the night. <laughs> Life can be so nebulous, temporal, to be sure. Perhaps his duration of life could be shortened. <laughs> A dastardly, deadly deed. A pestle for pounding poison. An unassuming nocturnal nightcap, <laughs> waiting for the mother's absence, and the nurse busy with chores, with his sleeping lips parted, just one drop of the black robe of death. Let me covet the child. What does this dead 
blood have to do with you? And what do you have to do with it? Are you related as father and son? If so, did this relationship exist before? Will it continue in the future? And therefore, can you truly say that it exists now? Therefore, O oh, King Chitra Ketu, carefully consider you, the soul's position. Try to understand who you are, where you have come from, and why you are under the control of this lamentation. By understanding your own true position, you will be able to understand the true position of everyone and everything else, and thereby you will obtain peace. You seem to know so much. Who are you? I am the same Angira Muni, who gave you this son, and this is the great sage Narada Muni. Any ability you have to create, maintain, or annihilate is being induced by the Supreme Lord. Yet, forgetting who has induced us to act so, we consider our very selves the doer. What does he say? Any ability that we have to create, such as a father who begets a son, such as the government seeing to the public's welfare, or even the ability that snakes possess to annihilate. These all belong to the Supreme Lord who induces them in us. That is why we must remember that it is the Supreme Lord who is in control of everything and not consider that we are the doers. You are great personalities. Can you help me? Blinded by the darkness of my illusions. Please, light the lamp of knowledge. Save me. Well, does everyone understand what's happening now? Oh, yes, I can see. The king is submitting himself at the lotus feet of the guru. Yes. <laughs> we may possess many things. A body, wife, son, fame. Well, friends, yet they are all the same, and that one day we will be forced to be separated from them. They are all impermanent, and because they are sometimes seen and sometimes not, they are a constant cause of expectations and disappointments. Therefore, Try to understand who we really are, why we are under the influence of this lamentation. Jivara Sri Pohoi, Krishnara Nityadas, Krishnara Tatashtashakti, Veda Veda Prakash. The living entity's constitutional position is to be an internal servant of Krishna because. He is the marginal potency of the Supreme Lord. By understanding this, we will be able to obtain peace. Oh, what is happening now? By his mystic power, Narada Muni will bring the dead child back to life and is about to address us. According to the, my fruit of activities, I, the soul, travel from one body to another. Sometimes I take birth as an animal, sometimes as a plant, and sometimes as a human being or demigod. Therefore, in which birth was this king my so-called father? Oh, this child is surely bewildered. No, he is not bewildered. He is very clear-headed. Excuse me. Excuse me, I, I, I'm really sorry. I, I know this is a little inappropriate, but I got a problem here. 
You're saying so-called parents. I have children. You just left a few minutes ago, and now they're your so-called parents. What is this? Because of my past karma, I have been forced to enter many different bodies, made of the five gross elements and the three subtle elements. Each time, the mixture of elements is different. So, I appear sometimes as an ant, and sometimes as a demigod. <coughs> just because I entered a body made by this king, does not make me his son in any way. My real relationship is with the Supreme <coughs> Personality of Godhead. Well, if that's the case, then why have you caused the king so much pain? Our relationships in this material world are the results of our dealings as we try, try to enjoy the material elements. Who has not experienced that today's friend is tomorrow's enemy? Perhaps in my last life, I was the king's enemy, and I'm now appearing as his son. Why should he not consider me his former enemy and be jubilant upon my death? Well, help me to understand this, if you will. If the king is your enemy, then why does he have so much affection for you? If your enemy's gold falls into your hands, do you not use it for your own purposes? Do you not love it all the more? Gold is gold, but in different situations, it is either your friend or your enemy. So you're saying that the king's affection for you was only as a son? Yes. For example, when an owner is sold, from, when an animal is sold from one owner to another, the sense of ownership is broken. In the same way, I appeared as the king's son for some time. And when I went to another body, the affectionate relationship is broken. It is only the body which is born and lost along with all the connections related to it. Relations connected to it. Well, then what about us, the soul? The soul is equal in quality to the Supreme Lord because like the Lord, it is eternal. This soul is not affected by friends and enemies or happiness and distress. Well, I seem to be affected in that way. Because the soul is very, very small, it can be covered by the material energy. But, but in this conditioned state, we do have friends and enemies and are always affected by anger and lamentation. In order to become free from all these things, we must depend on the transcendental Supreme Lord. Actually, I'm starting to make a little sense here, and uh, thanks, uh, young man. <laughs> Chichiketu cut the shackles of his material affection and gave up his lamentation. Oh, this has been so exhausting and stressful, but finally at last we've come to the end of our play. This could be the end, but for the king and for all of us, it is only the beginning. Do you remember the beautiful prayers that we heard earlier? As small calves Wait anxiously for the time of milking, as a morose wife yearns for her husband's return. Such longing and desire, such love and affection for the Supreme Lord, was expressed in these words by this same Chichiketu, who we have just now seen renounce material affection. But I thought we heard those prayers from Vitrashura. So Vitrashura and Chichiketu are one and the same, then how did our dear king go from renouncing his worldly life to developing such strong and deep sentiments for the Lord within his heart? Your question is very good. Though the hour is late, I will answer in brief. When Angiramuni first came to the king, he only gave him a son. It wasn't until after the death of his son that Narada Muni also came and gave instructions regarding bhakti yoga. It is only after material attachment and the desire to enjoy the material world has been given up that one can fully understand bhakti yoga. 
Then, hearing and chanting mantras given by his guru, King Chitraketu journeyed from the dark well of materialistic life to the sweet resting place of the Lord's lotus feet. story. She <laughs> oh my blessing. <laughs> From beginning he is a pure devotee. Man. Those in householder life, but I want oh they should preach my mission in this way at preparing this world. And also by so much blessing to the son of king. Oh, she was. I like him very and I have so much affection for him. And that is why I told him to be my most favorite dis disciple. That he may message me, massage me, he can cook for me, he can preach for me. And <laughs> and he is very qualified. I want that very soon he should be expert in all these things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So much blessing to Angira and North Rishi. the personality Narada and Angira, but who are playing the part of Narada and Angira, my blessing, that they should follow Angira and North, actually. And they should be oh, develop, developing their Krishna form system like that. All the kings, the king, Chitraketu Maharaj, is still now and not the Recognize that who is he? <laughs> Yours? Oh, oh. <laughs> very wonderful, very wonderful. <laughs> so all the in the oh, family of Nanda Kumar, Nanda Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> all the Oh yes, she is also and daughter of Prithu. The two are what? Cool. Queens. So, uh, they played part very well. Three kings. And they hated that boy. And they, uh, oh, next poison in, in milk. Oh, this is the measure of the But you know, when Narada and Angira came, and he told all this is done, and Jiva Tattva, Krishna Tattva, all that in King and King. Uh, also, oh, I will come. So, what I will don't disturb me. Uh, oh, this is the nature. That, oh, without any reason, they quarrel themselves. They cannot be here. Happiness of another animal, very jealous of This is nature of this world. But with the king, they also realized this fact and they went to Narada and Angira and fell flat on their lotus feet and requested, now we have given poison. 
Now we are women. So, please be merciful to me, like king and queen, and give initiation, initiation and mantra to me, that we can be successful in our life. Then Narada and Angira, they became very happy, and with the king, queen, and all the kings, oh, he gave mantra, and all left their houses. We cannot leave. But they left and went to the forest and they began to chant that mantra and remember very quickly Chitraketu Maharaj became one of the very dearest of Krishna, of Sankarsan, and became the god brother of Shankar. And now they have told all the history. And also, I am uh, blessing who oh, Bajendranantha that he arranged some questions, <laughs> very important questions, interesting, and that why oh very boldly and very in good way he explained everything and he answered all. To my blessing to all, up to all that. And to hear us also, audience also, they presently heard. And I think that this is my mission to come to do here. Go, Prima. I can't introduce to you all sweets, but.